Hello there, welcome to my channel. I'm Tina the Thankful Planner and as you know if you watched the intro video uh, we're changing the channel up a little bit where I'm adding a few tutorials on really building, starting, growing a business. And um, this first tutorial, I thought, let's start at the beginning. I was going to look at membership sites, and I've had some of my subscribers contact me talking about those sort of things. But also, um, as a planner, I like to do um, first things first. And so today, um, you see on my screen here, this is called a business model canvas. And if you um, have been involved in um, entrepreneurship or, you know, building a business, you might have seen this before. Um, this is pretty standard. It's been out since 2005. It was invented and it really is a way to figure out your business um, to look at your proper what you're offering the clients how you're going to go about doing it um, from a visual standpoint so it's so much easier than how they used to do it in the old days where they used to write a whole business proposal and a business plan and all that and this is very similar to that but it's just like a bootstrap version like a really quick and it really is quick like should only take you like 30 minutes to do this it might take me a little bit longer because obviously I'm showing you how to do it but um this is a really great starting place from doing your from creating your your business whatever the idea is whatever business you've got so anyway that's enough talk I have an example that I'm going to work through which is um, a business in in England I'm in Canada now but it really doesn't matter where you are this works for everybody so I'm going to say the main place I start is here and this is your value proposition. So what is, and sorry, I've got bits of paper everywhere, so you'll see me looking all over the place. <laughs> um, but so what is a value proposition? So a value proposition is going to be how you identify the core value you're going to bring to your customers. So what exactly is your company providing? What is it going to do for these people? Um, what's the problem that you're solving for your customers um, and how do you offer I mean maybe it's a service that other people are, are offering or a product that other people are offering but how are you going to do it differently you know uh, have you looked at the price the quality the design how is that different from other companies so there's some of the things I want you to think about and I'm going to do like a really quick one we're going to look at um, a sushi well it's like a little sushi stand almost in a sushi um, a delivery business so I'm going to use that as an example but this works for any business so it could be a service or a product so I start here so value proposition one so I would say the first thing I'm going to type in here is um, they are going to deliver so although they have a they're going to have a stand um, it's going to be by a station in London although they have a stand they are going to actually deliver food as well so that would be one of the you know the real sort of value propositions well let's go will deliver and um oh and this is the this is the thing it's going to be oh sorry i don't know if you can read that but um we deliver and it's gonna be vegan and oh sorry <laughs> It's quite small for me to read. Perhaps we should go in a bit. Let, let's just zoom in a little bit. Let's do that one. No, zoom into width there. That's better. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Hopefully you can see that now. So we'll deliver vegan and vegetarian. And I think another one, what they said was gluten free. sushi at a affordable prices and don't get caught up in the detail when you're doing this really it should be quick you shouldn't be putting too much detail it is just that, like the high level view don't get into the the particulars you know don't get caught into that um and in something else because they're not 
obviously it's not um, animal products so I would say you know people that um, help fight against animal abuse is something that's really important to him and I'm going to say we want to add another one to that oh sorry e -e -e -e, that's annoying move that over yeah let's put a, let's put another one in you can just add them from the side here if you haven't used this this is lucid charts and um i could probably i'll set i'll put a link to this also in the description so you can just use it you can like do it on paper um i can also give you a link to the paper version of this um but i like it digital you know i like to be able to have it digital um, yeah, and so it will help out help out the local community as well because you're going to be you're going to be supplying jobs. So okay, so they're sort of like the main value propositions, and we can work on this and work on this, but that that will do for now. So then let's look at, oh, I just moved that, didn't I? So then maybe let's look at some of the key activities that we're going to have to do. So we're going to have to establish the um, V Sushi, sorry, Sushi brand. It's new, so that is something that we're going to have to do. And I'm gonna have to add another. Let's just move that to there because I need another one on there. And also, we want what else do we want? We want to, um, you're gonna, you're gonna employ local people. Okay, on particular, I like things to be the same. Oh, and that's bigger lettering, isn't it? We've got seven there, we've got eight there. Let's do seven, there we go. And then also under key activities, I'm going to... One of the things that is major is... Let's use a green one, just because I want to be different. Let's add that in there. <coughs> Excuse me produce enough sushi to generate an income there's no point in doing it without that is there okay so we've got um key activities so this is why like we put that in to make sure you focus on these things so what are the key resources okay so i don't know if you noticed but on the left side of the value proposition these are all sort of internal structures so your key partners your key activities your key resources your cost structure whereas on the right side of this value proposition excuse me are all your sort of external influences like your cust all about your customers your travel um your channels your revenue so that's all your external and this side's all your internal if that helps and this is like see like we're whizzing through it so um key resources so key resources are like what specific assets you need um to create this business so what um consider what resources distribution um what do you need to maintain customer relations does your company require a lot of capital or human resources like like those sort of things so what are the key components of that and so i've got um for the sushi it would be let's move that out of the way source of oh, of raw food i mean that's the first component isn't it so your ingredients and we want to make that local don't we and then oops and then we've got and i didn't know it did that you could just press enter and that made another one <laughs> and then premises 
and we're going to start off um, with a, a kiosk, I believe. Um, and oh, let's do another one. Let's do another one here. And um, deliberately, this is done with sticky notes so that you can move them around and, and take them off. Like, don't write on the actual um, in the background because you want to be able to maybe you move them, maybe you put them in the wrong place, or maybe you think, oh, that should go there. So, you, you need to be able to move them. Um, and it's more, it, it gets you in the idea of more, it's not, um, it's more of an ideas thing then. It helps to get that feeling with sticky notes, you know, that you're just mind mapping stuff. I don't know if you've heard that before, but that's another thing. Anyway, sorry. Um, well, someone has to cook it. So there's your um, sushi cooking skills. That's a key resource. And then what next? And then also, there's quite a few that we need on this. I could have used the green ones actually, couldn't I? But, uh -huh. So you're going to need some startup money. It's sorry, I keep. Let me move my um, camera over here because I, I'm tending to keep looking at you as if I'm, you know, there we go. That's all about because the camera is actually right there. Sorry, you messed it up. Let's move it up here. That's it, right? That's out of the way now. I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're on to this one, and this was startup money, wasn't it? And it doesn't matter yet what that is. We're, we're not even considering that yet. And then another key resource for your business is people with um, vegetarian. Oh, sorry. Read what I'm writing. Vegetarian. Vegan and gluten free dietary needs. We're going to need them, aren't we? Okay, so I think that's really good. I'm going to pop that in there. Can we do that a little bit? Move you about a bit and then bring it up to there. There we go. Okay, that's good. We're in. We've got it all. And then bring that to the front. Oh. there okay we've got it right so that's key resources so it's now starting to fill out a bit so let's look at key partners i am working on all the stuff that you have to do first of all um to grow your business whatever it is so now like key partners you're going to identify a company's um important suppliers that you're um from your supply chain um, where are your key resources coming from um, what activities are performed by these partners so think about those sorts of things um, why your company works with those key partners and the motivations behind it think about those but we're not going to go into detail here we're just going to list them so I mean the first one is going to be um, we're actually the kiosk is going to be a station so we're going to say station because obviously there's going to be a relationship with that oh that's looks like a there station and then we're going to wait where are we going to get the food from and we'd really like to use um farmers local farmers I should put in there as well so we don't lose track of what we're doing. Sorry, this is, yeah. So you just know what it is. And if you want to take a screenshot, it makes sense. Farmers and food ingredients. That should be it. And then we need, what else? We do need, let's just move it up a bit. Do, 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 like that, so this is different. And, um, yeah, so here's the thing. You might, you definitely, key partners would be um, supermarkets because you're going to be sell, selling these prepackaged. Oh.
That looks like a five again. I don't think it is, but yeah, no, it's weird. If you put the caps on there, it comes out like a five. Okay, so supermarkets are going to be someone else you want to have as a key partner. And um, some sort of, if you're, if you're selling these, um, you're going to need some sort of packaging, aren't you? If you're going to be doing delivery, deliberately, seriously, if you're going to be doing deliberately, de deliberately, <laughs> packaging company, and I don't know what they're going to use yet, but anyway, that's one. So packaging company. So I think for now, I'm just looking at my notes because this is an actual example. So, and then let's have a look then at the cost structure of this and so we're not putting any specifics in yet we just put in um what key costs in our in this business model what are um the major components that are driving costs too and i would say let's put a main costs are gonna be now we can put them each on different sticky notes. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's put them on separate ones so we don't get most. So, so it's going to be the um, the station. So the premises is going to be a big one. Yeah, I'll do that. And then the next one is going to be the ingredients. It's going to be a big unit. And then let's put that there. Our next one, hmm, it'll be a bit of each. You've got staff or what? You, sort of say that or employees we say staff in, in England and then um, next one I would put that, that we might need to just squash this up a bit there like that like that and we're going to say um, oh we've got packaging but I would say that's probably the last thing um, oh advertising that you know like you've got to allow for that so advertising marketing however you want to call it is the same thing really oh well you got to pay for it you know like marketing sometimes you can do that for yourself and you don't have to pay for it but advertising normally costs okay right and then finally packaging okay so this side is pretty much done and so you can see it gives you quite a good view of your business model and the things and the components what's the point of this well it does help as you move further down the line because you've covered this and if you're going to do if you're going to go um if you need to get a loan from the bank for your business then this will help actually when you're creating no business plan things like that you know so let's move on to a customer relationship so we need to establish um, a community, don't we? So let's put the, a grounding community, and that's going to be first of all, first of all, in the centre, in the city centre, around and that's actually a really good place because there's so many commuters like who come through um the station that even if they don't buy in the morning which actually a lot of people do on their way to work they will pick up their lunch and um so this is going to work really well in a station but also if you know it's there and you work and you work in the city centre and you're around the city centre then you know to nip back there and you can get it at lunchtime so whatever so it's really going to create that sort of establishing that grounding 
in the community. So that's what I like about this. Channels. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of channels. I am not going to do a sticky note for each one because there isn't enough room in this little bit. So obviously, oh, let's do that. Social media networks. It's huge. And then, yeah, a word of mouth. And what else have I put? Um, family and friends. Just think, oh, just think about all the different channels um, of connection that you can make. And then, yeah, one of the ideas is a blog. So, the sushi blog. I mean, there's funnels. We can do all of that later. Emails. Phone, events, community, friends is important. Okay, so there are, they are the channels that we're looking at. And let me just move you out the way. <laughs> Put it down there. Right, so, and then we've got this customer segments. So customer segments are your customers. Who are they? So the first one, obviously, is your vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free, intolerant. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. And then you've got... Employees on their um, on lunch break. That's that segment that I talked about. When you're in the city, you tend to get those types of of customers too. Let's pull it up there, and then we want who next is to add another one. I hate it when they. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> and then we've got oh, health conscious people too. That would be a good one on there. That doesn't look right because the S is missing. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Oh, that's annoying that it does that. And then we're going to come back, bring it back. There we go. Health conscious. And then we want who else? Bring you up there. And then we're going to say, oh, obviously, just people who love sushi. And probably just passers by too, you know, like general public passers by or walking past. Okay, so that is your customer segment. So we're almost finished this. I don't know how long it's taken. I haven't been checking the time. 23 minutes. Look at that. See, even try, even slowing down, we can do this. So I would try definitely, if, definitely if you're just starting out, get it under 30 minutes. You don't want to waste too much time. Okay, so um, revenue streams. You have to identify, excuse me, oh, the way in which your value proposition generates money for your business. Do you have multiple methods of it? What's your price strategy? You know, um, have you thought about that? How are your customers going to pay? Through what channels? Are you going to have an online shop where they can buy? What's, the, you know, is it a phone? Can, can people phone and pay over the phone? Or So think about some of those structures and what revenue streams you've got. And for this, I mean, this is the, the basic sort of like customers will pay to meet, I don't know if you, but we know this, meet their dietary needs. So people who are gluten 
intolerant, things like that, will pay. You know, and we're not saying that we're going to charge an exuberant amount, but they will pay to have, to get their needs um, met. Also, um, this is a good one, like a quick, um, quick pre. Prepared, oh, pre raw, healthy, and sustainable sushi. People will pay for that. So you're going to be offering like a greener option. Let's put that in as well. So. Healthy, greener option. And you're also... Um, so more variety. And options. Oh, and choice, I would say. And... choice for vegans vegetarians and gf gluten free i'm not going <laughs> to keep writing it again and i'm sorry not gluten free and gluten intolerant And for the general public. And so, and so what is, um, so these are your revenue streams. And then one more, I would definitely say, let's use, show you that again. One more, I would definitely add also is um, expansion. to other stations and I think like a good one would be um, and when I say stations I mean railway stations or you could have like um, bus stations but in England we have a really good infrastructure lots of people use buses and trains and things like that so um, this is a great spot a great market for a company like this and I have to say that you know expansioning into other stations is fantastic because um, normally these people that are traveling to this to work in the city are from other areas so if you've got other local areas so they could be just traveling from you know the the town next to um, the city you know so if you've got a if they get used to seeing you um, in this spot and then they start recognizing and identifying with your brand, they like what you do, and then you start offering it in their station too, um, then it really becomes popular. So it's a really great way to expand. So I'm going to um, I'm going to stop it there because I think that's a lot of information. So I have this resource. Um, the only thing is you do have to have... Um, a subscription to lucid charts um and that is um i'll put a link to it down below it is actually i think you can actually get a free subscription if you want to do this digitally but you can always just draw it out yourself um, and do it but it really is a great start so you get the fuller picture of what is happening in your business and actually people can then look at is it actually worth doing this business you know like and the next stage this process is the value proposition canvas so we're going to go into a little bit more detail on the next video into this value proposition and look at it before you start anything before you invest any money and time into an idea uh, map it out first and see if it's actually going to work um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, please drop it down in the box below. I'm Tina, the Thankful Planner. 
I love planning and this is just, I love this stuff. So I like helping businesses grow and um, build an audience. If you need any help, then just check me out on, I'll give you my LinkedIn profile and um, let me know what you think of the tutorial. And I'm coming at you with the value proposition canvas next.